So entry points are always super important when it comes to a hobby. It is the first point of contact for someone new to get a taste of what they are getting into. Do they taste like delicious borscht soup or like a gravy of smelly socks? And so to make things easier, here are some of my picks for the first half of 2023. Hopefully this will make your life easier when it comes to choosing a cheapy IEM. So let's go! So the first on the list would be the Tangzu Wanners, which is the second cheapest IEM in the Tangzu lineup. They have a new bullet shaped iron called the Changle, but I haven't gotten my hands on them yet, so I can't really say much about it. But anyways, the Warner is a solid iron when it comes to sound, featuring a neutral, warm signature, and for the most part, pretty well balanced and natural sounding. It is one of those IEMs that will suit almost all genres of music decently well. It features a single dynamic driver on the inside. There is also a focus on the vocals that is quite alluring and has fine details as well. There is just a little bit more emphasis on the upper mid to give it better shape to the overall sonic signature and to add definition to the mid range section. Details in the bass and treble can be a little bit better but overall I'm quite satisfied when it comes to the sound. So mid bass is more prominent in the bass frequencies of the Warner. In terms of bass speed, they are adequate for most genres of music, but struggles a little when you have more complex bass runs. Also, as mentioned, detail on the bass isn't the best and can be a little one-dimensional. Treble extension here is okay, personally not too airy for me. Symbols have enough sizzle to them to be engaging, but not irritating like a fly that never actually goes away. When it comes to soundstage, they are pretty mediocre but in line with the rest of the IEMs here. Build quality wise, I must say these are the poorest on the list and has an almost old school KZ plastic vibes. It is pretty thin plastic that gets scratched up quite easily even when you put them in a felt line bag. Also, the cable here is clearly on the cheap side, but to be fair, these are 20 bucks, so what are you really expecting? The 3.5mm jack has some molding that gets in the way when you try to plug them into something that has a recess socket. These are a pair that I use from time to time. Overall sound quality is good for the price that you're paying relatively. Um, the middling build quality shouldn't pose a problem as most would be looking to upgrade from these training bikes to a faster bike anyway. So moving on to the second recommended IEM, under $50 would be the Truthius Hola. Now the Hola is the cheapest offering from Truthius that is famed for using 3D printing technology when it comes to building your phones. This of course was haloed by the Hexa that used 3D printing in an interesting manner at its price point that, that caused people to sit up and take notice. In the same vein, the Hola kinda adopted this strategy too, but just sticking a big fat $20 on it to get it to a different price point. It does share some things in common with its more expensive sibling, the Hexa. The Holas are 3D printed by Hagias that also did produce the chassis of the Hexa as well. Similarly, like its older sibling, it does have somewhat of a similar tuning, albeit not exactly. The Hola has a nice 3D matte printed chassis in the front with a faceplate that has an Asa Noha pattern on it. The cable that comes with it is actually pretty nicely twisted and feels rather sturdy. These do feel of quality at its price point but design wise it's kind of boring for its pseudo custom universal shape that is honestly pretty forgettable. Inside it is a 11mm PU plus liquid crystal polymer dynamic driver. When it comes to the sound, the Holas are neutral, natural sounding which is quite a departure from, the, uh, from others on the list. It does not really exaggerate any other frequency band and have quite a well-behaved overall presentation. Technicalities such as details and resolution are in line with others in the price range but presented quite differently. Sub bass is a bit more dominant on the Holas that later tapers down gently into the mid-range and because of this, you hear the rumbles just a bit more than the actual punch of the bass. Details on the bass are okay, but I think that they... Details on the bass are okay, but I think that it is a little flat sounding and wish for it to be a little bit uh, more engaging. Speed on the bass is also pretty average. Good enough for most music, but struggles when you need a little bit more speed in the sound. 
Mid-range here is slightly recessed compared to treble and bass, but only just. It has a neutral thick weight to them. The upper mids of the holas are not that prominent and because of that, I feel they can do with a bit more bite and clarity in the mid-range. They do sound smooth and polite, but if there was just a hair more definition, I think I like them better. Also, because of the gentle upper mid, separation between the layers of music for instruments remains decent. Treble and holas are again smooth sounding, but I just wish for it to have a bit more bite to make them sound livelier. Soundstage again is bang average. At the end of it, I think that the holas are suitable for someone who likes something neutral and smooth, and it does pretty well on these two parameters. They are just really good for people who are a little bit more treble sensitive. So next on the list would be the Blonde X Hawaiian Bad Boy Zac 300. And these are said to be the reincarnation of the legendary Blonde BL03. Only thing is that this time round is brought back to life in conjunction with HBB. Now the original BL03 had a chassis that looked very reminiscent of a Bayer Dynamic Zalanto. I mean, the BL03 was pretty much inspired by that design and took very few creative liberties to make it look different. But okay, fine, I need to give credit where credit is due. They did succeed in doing something. They succeeded in making it look cheaper. Now, what I like about this reincarnation is that the chassis is now made from a zinc alloy that on my copy has been sandblasted and finally adopted a dark blue colour. And it's honestly quite nice. On the front of it is the legendary blonde Herpy Derpy Dragon. Now, it does come in a glossy gold finish. Great for those of you who want to fantasize being Midas for a bit. Inside it is a 10mm silicon dynamic driver that will influence the overall tone. It of course does have a two-pin cable that has an over-mold design. Um, that basically means that you can use third-party cables on them, but it'll just look a bit odd because there's the bit sticking out. For me, fit isn't an issue on the Zac 300 as it adopts a custom universal shape despite it being made of metal. Now, in terms of sound, the Blonde Zac 300 is a mild V-shaped iron that has a slight emphasis on lower harmonics. This lends for it to be a relatively polite listen. It will appear slightly thick and lush compared to other recently released iams in the market. It just sounds a bit more meaty compared to its competition in the price bracket. Bass on the Zac 300 is plentiful with elevated sub bass that is just delightful. Readily pumping up bass lines that gives you almost a club-like bass reproduction. Mid bass tapers a little from the sub bass and this is quite nicely done as it adds more definition to the mid range. But they still do offer a pretty good kick when, in, when the impact of your song summons it. Clarity on the bass section is okay, but can be a little clearer though. Oh, one more thing that is there are the lingering bass harmonics that will affect the bass section. This is not to say that it bleeds into the mid-range, but will color the mid-range somewhat. Now the mid-range on the Zac 300 is pretty influenced by the bass. I'm not saying that there is bass bleed, but rather the tonality of the mid-range is thicker and has more lower harmonics to it. This allows for the Zac 300 to sound pretty full and meaty. Male vocals really benefit from these characteristics. There is extra weight in the grunt and overall male vocals sound pretty euphoric. Female vocals too will end up with, uh, with more of a lower mid-range harmonics. It is still dainty sounding but with obviously more weight. I do think that when it comes to instruments, the overall tone has this effect applied but still natural sounding. Instrument separation though, it's kinda okay. Although I think uh, the competition does perform better. Trapper extension here is adequate, cymbals and crashes are not too in your face and decays quite quickly. It is present but does not take up too much sonic weight in the whole soundscape, but enough to give some air and edge to the overall sound. Soundstage, while pretty decent when it comes to width and height, that is also good but positioning is really quite average as I think they are affected by the slight lack of presence in the treble region. Now the Zac 300 comparatively against the competition is a warmer sounding IEM, perfect for times where you just want to kick back and relax.
So next we have the SimGuard EW100P. So SimGuard recently has been releasing quite a few IENs. Firstly with the EA500 which is clearly quite a darling of an IEM with its great build quality and sound. The company later released the EW100P shortly after in the wake of the EA500 and I just saw the other day they released the, they announced rather the EW200. Haven't heard them yet but they look kind of interesting. A little too much sim god in, in such a short time span but who knows i'm not sim god so of course you cannot expect the same amazing metal chassis of the ea500 on such an affordable product but for what it is worth the ew100p is really quite decently built the im itself is made from plastic that has a raised section that allows you to fit your earphones into your concha quite well. I like how actually SimGuard has continuity in its design as this is a feature on the EA500 as well. Inside the EW100P is a liquid crystal polymer 10mm dynamic diaphragm. Liquid crystal polymer was first used on the old Sony flagship, the MDR EX1000 and boy that was legendary. So these, these earphones are clearly built cheap. The cable here really lacks the choker which is honestly kind of disappointing but I hope the overall sound signature will make up for that. As for sound, the EW100P is a well-balanced IEM that leans slightly warm compared to a true neutral IEM. I like I kind of like this as it prevents it from sounding too robotic. It adds just enough of it to sound lively rather than just pure sterile. Bass here is nice and resonant that is typical of a dynamic driver. I do not think that bass extension here is extremely extensive but generally quite adequate for the price. Rumbles are present but mid bass is a little bit more noticeable. Transient in the bass frequencies is also pretty speedy for an IM of its price. Dynamics here too is also very decent. So mid range on the EW100P is slightly warmer than neutral. It has good body and makes vocals pretty to listen to. Upper mid is also pretty noticeable and it gives good edge to the overall vocal and mid-range character that is rendered on the EW100P. Now instruments here is crisp and has good texture that contrasts and separates the vocals by adding a layer of dimension and depth in the music and as such mid-range separation here is done pretty well. Treble here has a little bit more energy from the slightly elevated upper mid-range as such cymbals are pretty darn clear. Decay on the treble is also responsive and fast enough for treble to not overstay its welcome. Soundstage is pretty darn average, uh, it's basically in line with the rest of the competition, it's not really much wider or is it small, it's kind of the same. But positioning on the, e positioning on the EW100P is solid. That too is well rendered from the dynamics of the bass. Now, moving on to the Moondrop Lance. Now, the thing about the Moondrop Lance is that it is the next generation of the Moondrop Choose, uh, which has a rather peculiar signature. By peculiar, I mean that it has a bright, it has a bright character that isn't the most welcoming of signatures and can be a problem, especially when it targets the entry level segment. It can be quite a shock for people new to the hobby. Now, the Lance thankfully improved on the true tuning somewhat by introducing just a hair bit more bass uh, to slightly balance out the signature better, albeit just really just a little bit slightly. What is outstanding on the Lance is the chassis of the body, which is made from metal injection molding stainless steel. Now this isn't a cheap process, as such it feels really premium in terms of construction. Of course it also has a 2 pin termination and inside it is a 10mm dynamic driver. Sound, these are... Sound, these have a neutral signature that is very different from the rest of the earphones on the list where there is a bit more emphasis on the upper mids and treble that isn't really that balanced out by bass although they did kind of increase it a little bit. So it does make for quite a challenging signature for people who are new to the hobby. Based on the lines are lean, you get a small kick when the bass drops a little more on the sub bass section compared to the mid bass. I do find them to be quite tight though, but really lacking in a bit of dynamics. Mid range here is the main focus of the lance. Comparatively, I found them to be slightly thinner sounding to the other irons on the list, but also found that they are rather lively here. The lower amount of bass puts an emphasis on the mid-range and as such, vocals are accentuated. 
you get a rather good lot of micro nuances here that isn't that common in this price range. Treble here is decently extended, symbols have sufficient bite but I do wish for them to have just a bit more details. Soundstage on the lance are decent and nothing really groundbreaking honestly. Positioning here is excellent but always hope for a bit more depth as this is really hampered by the lack of dynamics. Now the lance are certainly not for everyone. They are a little bit brighter than the rest of the pack but are built to incredible build quality. Do look into these if you are looking for something that is very different from the rest of your daily drivers. Now next, Sales Note Zero. There is an interesting story on how I got my pair of Sales Note Zero. My nephew recently got into the IM game as well and these are one of the pairs that he got. So at the point of time, I haven't gotten to review the, these yet and he was so kind to loan them to me. But I also kind of loaned him my mojo so... You know. So the thing about the Zeros is that it is an interesting pair of IEM and I can applaud it for having a new chassis shape rather than the done to death custom universal shape that every Tom Dick and Harry IEM brand wants to use. It has a rather nice triangular design and for some reason fits in my ear quite well. Chassis is made up of two pieces of plastic with a metal piece on the front. It also has a two pin termination. Cable on these are, well, brown and pretty manageable. When it comes to sound, the Zeros feature a neutral warm signature that is very organic in nature. It does not have the prominent upper mid-range like how the EW100P does, but despite that still maintains good level of clarity. I do find that the tone on the Zeros to be rather accurate, especially when it comes to having a natural tonal weight. And because of its nature, it makes it a very easy IEM to use over a large pool of genres. Based on the zeros are slightly elevated from neutral, I do find that it has good control when it comes to slam. Uh, there is slightly more emphasis on the sub bass and tapers off gently when it reaches the mid bass. This creates a cohesive presentation. Transits wise, it is adequately fast as well. Mid range is very natural sounding on the zero. There is warmth rendered into the vocals that allow them to be quite an enchanting listen. I do find vocals to sound very natural sounding. There is good enough clarity on the zero for the different voicings to be distinct. Now, treble extension is decent but mostly focusing on the lower treble section, and as such, they are airy but does not extend to the high heavens. For some reason, cymbals are rendered a little more laid back and not super shimmery, but that is not to say that it is dull. These are great for people who are a little bit more sensitive to splashy treble. Now, soundstage here is modest as well with width and height. Depth is good and positioning is honestly more than satisfactory. I really enjoy listening to the Zeros and must say that these are a pair of earphones that cannot really go wrong. If you are looking to own a pair, I think you'll be very happy with them. And finally, in conclusion. So, my personal favourite on the list would be a tie between the EW100P and the Cells Note Zero. Now, the EW100P has a bit more upper mid-range energy for it to sound a little bit more exciting, while the Zeros are a little more forgiving. But both are honestly excellent all-rounders. So, placed behind that would be the Blonde X HBB Z300. These render music quite differently from the rest of the IENs by emphasizing more on the lower harmonics. So it's quite refreshing to swap them out from time to time when I really want to enjoy male vocals. Uh, a bit back would be the Holas who could do nothing wrong but just isn't too interesting when it comes to sound. I just wish for them to be a bit more exciting sounding when it comes to the sonics. Build quality on them are honestly really nice, it's just the sonics are not super exciting but they are more than decent honestly. And lastly, tight at the back are the Tangzu Wana and Moondrop Lance for obviously very different reasons. Now the Wana, it's built quite poorly, giving me circa 2019 KZ vibes. My unit was scratched up a little bit too quickly for my liking and the plastic just feels a little bit too uh, toy factory-like. But despite that, the Wana actually has a very decent sound though. So if you can look past that, for sound alone, I do prefer them over the holers, but build quality, no. Now the Moondrop Lance has honestly the best build quality of the bunch, no doubt. Uh, but when it comes to the sound, they are attempting a neutral signature at this price point. And those signatures tend to sound a little bit rough compared to the competition. And usually for this type of signature, the trade-off for the slightly rougher texture would be the superior details and technicalities. But I found them to be just okay and perhaps not worth the rougher tonal colour. And yeah, that is my roundup for the early 2023 cheapy IEM 
And I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Super Chong Show. If you like the content so well, please kindly press the like and subscribe somewhere over here. It will help me out a bunch. Makes me more motivated to talk about audio on YouTube. And yeah. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Super Chong Super Audio Show. And really hope to see you guys soon. Oh, by the time you're watching this video, I'm probably already traveling. Um, but with that said, I will still be pumping out one video a week, even though I'm not around. Uh, yeah, just hope to see your support. With that said, thank you guys for watching. See you guys soon.